Hello guys and welcome to today's tropical update and as we see as you guys can see we now have a tropical cyclone in the South Pacific this is tropical depression 5p and this is located at 18.3 south 174.1 east maximum sustained winds are at 30 knots or 35 miles per hour minimal center pressure is a thousand millibars all right so we're going to take a look at the IR here and it's it's not a pretty picture I, I'll admit that you still then have the monsoonal uh, messiness to the east of it, and this is the system, this sprawled out system between 15 and 18 south that is trying to disconnect from that monsoonal mess. As you can, as you can see, it, it clearly does have a well enough low level center in the winds to determine that this is a tropical depression. It just needs to work on some of this IR presentation here. But what, under the hood is good, but the the cover is not so much good <laughs> if that makes sense but as you can see there's actually two blobs of deep convection here that's trying to work its way together um and this is going to uh take a little bit of time to get organized enough to really take take over and start to strengthen i give it that about 12 hours maybe for this all to get together and uh, do something like really good with it. Okay, so here are we are the model track guidance here, and as you can see, this is all out to sea. There's gonna be no no islands affected by this whatsoever, unless it takes this red red course. But and then and then you got some of these islands feeling the effect, but most of them stay out to sea, not affecting too much. But the fish life. So the fishies might want to take care and pay attention to what's going on out there. No, I'm just playing. They can, they can handle that easily. All right. So here's the GEFS tracked in minimal MSLP. And as you can see, as I always say, the black is the average of everything. So the average here shows about 980 millibars here at 120 hours out. And you can see that some of these clusters here, there's some oranges, reds, and dark reds which indicate anywhere from 980 to 960. So there's a chance that this thing could really blow up a little bit as we go out through time. So here's the GEPS tracks and minimal. And as you can see, it's not as strong as the GEFS, but it's still, it's still out there. So 988 for the average uh, max pressure. There is some reds and oranges here. So, you know, that's a pretty decent uh, category one or low end cat two, you know, status there. All right, so here is the Joint Typhoon Warning Center's first cone for this. And as you can see, 18C today, 30 knots, 16 tomorrow, 40 knots, 18Z tomorrow, 45 knots. And this is where it peaks out, like 50 knots on 60 on the 10th. You know, this is the first forecast, and you know, I get that, but I, I don't see 50, only 50 knots happening and then pretty much weakens after that. I, I don't see it. So we're going to see how the Joint Typhoon Warning Center does with the other, you know, advisories going forward. And as you can see, 18Z on the 10th, 45, 18Z on the 11th, 40, 18Z 12, on the 12th, 40 knots and 18z on the 13th 35 knots so that is what the joint uh joint typhoon warning center's first cone looks like all right so here is the gfs here and here is 99p which we're not talking about that right now or wait that is 90p excuse me <laughs> I'm getting the mix up now all right so here is tropical depression 5 uh p here and as you can see we're looking we're in the moderate range for uh wind shear and the relative humidity is at 79 percent this is six hours from now 24 hours you can see it's starting to get together here 990 millibars and we're looking at 19 knots of shear and 83 percent of relative humidity and this is this shear is not working with any favors here but somehow at the 48 hours it's still is still strengthening so we're at the 983 mark here. 
And we're at 15 knots of shear and 72% relative humidity. This is all moderate and semi-good for the uh, relative humidity. 72 hours, we're at 968 millibars. So it's strengthening pretty nicely here. It, the, the, shot, the, the shear is down to a favorable 10 knots and relative humidity is at 76%. 96 hours of 9, 965, yeah, 965. And we got 20 knots of shear. So the shear is fluctuating. It's going from good to moderate, good to moderate, you know. And that's, you know, that can either help a tropical system or not help a tropical system. So that consistent fluctuation. But the relative humidity has been staying pretty consistent in the mid 70s to low 80s and now we're at 120 hours out and it's weakened a little bit weakened a little bit and if we can get the soundings oh yeah <laughs> 39 knots of shear that is not a good look right there and the relative humidity is at a neutral 60 percent so yes i can see why the gfs has a weakening here at this current point in time so, you know, we, see, we saw the relative humidity on that. So let's take a look at the relative humidity, if I can find it here. Oh, okay, it's over here. Relative humidity. All right, so analysis. You see plenty of dry air that's around the system. And you see here at the 24 hour mark that some of that dry air is trying to entrain itself into the circulation. And it looks like 48 hours, it's still, it looks like it's still trying to wrap around, but as you can see, it, it started to get a little bit more moisture for itself and trying to uh, fend off that dry air. 72 hours, 96 hours. It looks like it, dry air is to the, to the west, to the northwest, to the north, and to the northeast. So it's pretty much got a half half of the system surrounded by dry air. And that 120 hours out, you can see that it's starting to work its way into the uh, center of circulation. So that is what that is showing. So let's see what the ECMWF shows for tropical depression 5P. And this is initialized at 12C. And as you can see, there's a hundred, there's a thousand and one millibars. I almost said a hundred and one. That would basically be a black hole. <laughs> so 24 hours out, 994. 48 hours, 987. 72 hours, 981. 96, 980. And then 120 hours is a hundred, or I said a hundred again, 979 millibars. Also, you can see, you know, Invest 99P here as well, or Invest 90P. I did it again. All right, I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so here is the C-C surface temperatures, and we're just gonna, you know what? We're just gonna talk about both areas here. So as you can see, here where tropical depression five uh, P is, you see that we have. 30 and 29 uh, Celsius waters, which is plenty warm enough for intensification purposes. Like I said, though, that relative humidity is going to be quite a factor going forward. Is it going to fluctuate? Is it going to entrain into the system? You know, this is all stuff we're going to be getting answers to throughout time. But for right now, it's situated into these really warm up waters of 30 to 29 degrees Celsius. So with that in mind, we're going to take a look at the areas of 90P here because that's the next system we're going to look at. And as you can see, in its first stint of waters in the north northwest Coral uh, Sea, we got 30 degrees Celsius and we got 29 degrees Celsius. But once we get into the Gulf here, you can see that 31s and 32s are hidden here. So let's hope that that doesn't take that much advantage of these waters or it's going to go boom. And it's not, it's, if everything is perfect in this golf area, it's not going to be a very good look for these uh, 
these cities in towns in the northern Australian coastline. It's just an, it's just how it is. So let's hope that we get some wind shear going in this golf area and 90p does not blow up. So speaking of 90p, this is probably the best looking of the systems, of both systems here. As you can see, it's located 13.3 south, 147.9 east. The maximum same winds are 25 knots or 30 miles per hour. Minimal central pressure is at 1,002 millibars. All right, so here we are. We're taking a look at the IR presentation. And as you see, like I said, this looks a lot better than Tropical Depression 5P does. As you can see, you can see, you can see the twist, the spin in this system really nicely on this IR presentation. You can see that the deep convection is staying consistent. It's not poofing. It's not. It's not disappearing on a on a whim here. So I would not be surprised that in the next six or so hours they name this a tropical cyclone as well, which in my opinion should already be a tropical cyclone because of the consistent deep convection that's staying around the center of circulation here. All right, so we're going to take a look at two different models here for 90P. We're going to take a look at the CMC. And we're going to take a look at the Icon here. So as you can see, this is initialized at 12Z, and CMC has this at 1,002 millibars already. And then 24 hours out, 1,003 millibars. 48 hours of sin land, so obviously it's not, strength, not going to strengthen any. So 66 hours, once it gets into the golf area here, it starts to strengthen right away. That's something you do not want to see. Not want to see whatsoever. So we're at 999 millibars, 72 hours, still 999. But once we get to 96 hours, now it's at 984. And then 973. So CMC has this getting pretty pretty decent in the golf area here. Like I said, those, those super warm temperatures in the golf is going to fuel this system up if the shear is light. But that's the one that's the one thing that we want to see happen from now in maybe 66 to 72 hours out. We want to see if that shear increases in the golf so something like this does not happen. That, my friends, is rapid intensification. 966 before it makes landfall. So, yeah. So, here's the icon. We're initialized at 12Z. This is three hours out, 1,004 millibars. 24 hours out, doesn't show a number, but it's still a tropical cyclone. 48 hours, 1,002. Makes landfall 999 millibars. So 72 hours out, it starts to go into the Gulf where it starts to strengthen. 96 hours, we're at 1,001 millibars. 120 hours out, we're at 988. We won't go any farther than that because I got a five-day rule. Obviously, anything you know above five days is considered unreliable. Hell, even some people going out the three days calls the models unreliable. But we all, you know, have different references in mind as the five-day forecast. So to drive it all home here, you know, ninety uh, truck with depression five P should not. Unless it takes them farther east, each track, it should not be a problem for any land areas whatsoever. It's going to be a fishy type of situation. But Invest 90P is going to be a completely different story. I, I don't think there's any way around this not affecting people as it's, it, it goes back to towards the west. Um, some models have a weak, and then there's system that... Uh, Models like the European that showed at 950 something millibar storm hitting some of the north northern Gulf coast of Australia. So it just we're just gonna have to see over the next five days what happens with these, and I will definitely be staying on top of these from now on until they completely dissipate. Now that we're in the tropical cyclone phase. Anyways, I want to thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you guys on the next one, which will be tomorrow. All right, have a nice day.